handout that I gave you. Um, everyone here is familiar with the uh, chakras running through our body. Most people work with the primary seven chakras, the root chakra, which grounds us. And remember, if your root chakra is not strong and present, your crown chakra will not do diddly squat. Because if your crown chakra is wide open and you're not grounded, that energy will come in and come in and come in. And that's when people say things like, oh, I get so much pressure in my head, I get a headache, or oh, I'm queasy, I have vertigo, you know, I feel like I'm spinning, because you're bringing the energy in, and then what? And then people go, oh, well, I just dissipated around. Well, then you're kind of like a feather floating or a helium balloon. All this energy is coming into you and then floating to wherever. You have zero connectivity. And you're basically fine for self, you're going to be a little bit flaky, you know, but if you're grounded, then all of the divine energy can flow through you, you can direct it where you wish it to go, and it's constantly flowing into earth, who needs it a lot, and is always grateful to it. As, as they, they say in, um, you know, uh, Central and South American shamanic uh, Pacamama devours energy as she would chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, so you can even send like angry energy, negative energy, toxic energy. She doesn't care. It's energy. She devours it and converts it into nature goodness. So when you're feeling angry, say, Mama, take it. And she'll go, mm, <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, uh, so you, if you are grounded, you'll find, as you work with grounded energy, your root chakra will always naturally and instinctively automatically expand to be wider than your crown chakra and deeper than your crown chakra is tall. So the more you build your crown chakra, if you find yourself getting a little like queasy or overwhelmed, say root chakra expand. Activate, ignite, so go out there because um, that will support your crown chakra to go taller or wider or more intense. So remember that for the rest of this class, I root chakra always bigger and greater, more powerful than crown chakra. It doesn't matter if you think of your energy as an hourglass coming in and then out, or if you think of it like a column that you're just kind of at a certain point floating in the middle of. However you see it, just always let your root chakra support your crown. Just like uh, Gaia was telling us that joke, it's all about the base, about the base. <laughs> <laughs> so with um, kundalini energy, uh, I don't know who here works with kundalini energy, but it's not just about having the chakras resonate. I mean, of course, we talk about the seven chakras, the root, sacral, uh, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown. But these are like the seven primary chakras. They're meridians where a lot of energy, you know, our internal ley lines are crossing each other. So they resonate with more power. They're not the source of power, they're the resonance of power lines that are running all through our body. In Pranashakti, which is what I practice, we work with all 2,000 chakras in our body. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so we, we, we let our entire body become resonant with the energy, and we learn to direct it from any one point to any other. Like, you know when you get like a buildup of energy on the inside of your elbows or the backs of your knees? These are powerful chakras. And most of the time we're like, oh, shake it out, shake it out. Oh my God, that's so uncomfortable. Build it up and then shoot that energy out through your fingertips. Oh my God, it's crazy. Then you can rake energy, like use your fingers like a rake and like, you know, cleanse an entire environment of 
power up and send lines of energy out to places that need it. Like a tree will take that energy line and swing it to another tree. Like there's so much we can do with all of our many chakras. So um, in Kundalini energy, they focus, I mean, there's a lot, but it, I'm talking about this one element on the fact that these are not just energy centers that are stagnant, that just sit, they're not light bulbs that you turn them on or off. They are uh, power resources that you use to move energy. So they will uh, actively work, like there's great Kundalini meditation where you take the energy and you wrap it around one chakra and then around the other serpentine up and then you take the energy the other way and serpentine it up. So you have two lines of energy moving up. And then you might have one line of energy going up and one sending energy down. So as you're sending energy from Gaia to Source and from Source to Gaia, each one is wrapping around your major chakras. Uh, and of course you can take it as far as you want, wrapping around any of your 2000 chakras wrapping around your intentions, you know, you can go as far as you want with that. Well, if you look at these images on the first handout, and you're looking at the lines of energy moving up through the chakras, and of course, some of you may see it's also similar to the physician's staff, you know, for, which is from ancient Greek uh, um, medicinal. Also look at the DNA strand on the left. The DNA strand is basically a kundalini energy of chakras moving upward. And our entire body is made of DNA energy. So when um, I came back from Mexico and I told Jean-Marie about the meditation I was working with, I'm paraphrasing what Jean-Marie said because what she said was so eloquent and beyond my ability to properly replicate. We'll have to ask her to share with us more personally. She was talking about, and I think she did some in the Tuesday uh, meditation, of as you do the kundalini, you also then focus on your DNA strands and kundalini them, and then bring the DNA into your chakras so that your body becomes one DNA strand of rotating kundalini energy of chakra and DNA connectivity going up through you. Yeah, yes. And um, it was similar to what Azure Windwalker had seen at the same time. Her guides had shown her a similar meditation where you activate the kundalini energy going through you, but in a way where it becomes an onk, so that it's going up this way and then back down this way, but also through your arms this way, so that you have energy going out of you in all four directions, but also wrapping around through you at the same time. Um, what's wonderful about this kind of meditation is you can actually, it's a technical meditation, so it's not like a spirit journey or a raise your frequency. It's, and we're gonna do a few of these. Susan is one of my motivations for this. <laughs> the more you learn to work the technical elements in your body, the more you then have um, an experienced, strong structure, energetic structure within yourself to support things like raising your crown chakra super, super high so that you can bring your attention up to where the angelic realm is, ascended masters, other dimensions, while maintaining conscious connection, not the, well, I know I went somewhere, but I kind of spaced out after a certain point. Like, I, I think we, we all do. I know I do it. I do it. I'm like, okay, you had me up till you hit like the third chakra above the crown. And then I don't know, you guys caught me on your way back down. <laughs> you know, oh, I lost you when we hit the pineal gland, but my pineal gland had a good time. <laughs> So the nice thing is it's a form of a mindfulness meditation. When you sit there, and we will do some of these practice meditations today and actively work 
connecting chakras to each other and sending energies through chakras to each other. Um, and the reason I like looking at this whole DNA concept along with the chakras is, um, and this is going to be another big part of what we're doing today. We get so in our head with self-judgment. We're like, oh, she can do it, but I can't. Or, oh, my sacral chakra is blocked, so I can't. Or, you know, we have all these reasons in our head why we can't do things. But if we think of it as a technical exercise that removes the uh, moral value or do I deserve this? Who am I to think that I would get to do this? I'm not good enough. It removes all of that because it's a technical exercise. Um, and it helps us reverse the thought process of, oh, when I am good enough, then I'm able to do things. It's, well, I do these things and then I become good enough. You know, if a chakra is blocked, then I, I actually bless the blockages. I say, well, there's obviously something very precious inside of me that my energy chose to protect until such a time as I am ready to activate it and work with it. So I thank the block. It's been my protector. It's been my caregiver. It's made sure that no damage comes to the precious inner. And then I say to the block, now help me be the mentor. Help me be the teacher. Block, instead of being like this, I invite you to become like this. And whenever you need, you can snap shut. But maybe with air gaps in there. doesn't have to be so tight. I'm now an adult. It goes similar to a soul retrieval concept where uh, you go to where a part of you was lost and explain to that part that the body, you know, the person is now ready to take care of this shard and you bring it back. It's very similar concept. So if you go to the very poorly written second page, <laughs> this was my vision. And you see, I drew with a pen all the kundalini lines going through all the chakras up and down. You notice the root chakra, it's, it's the same as, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's not well written. <laughs> the root chakra goes down deep and the crown chakra opens up high. And again, it can be narrow and high, it can be wide, it can be whatever you need for the moment for what you're connecting with. As we're doing the kundalini of energy up, we also bring it back down. Two things that I was shown in particular were um, in prana shakti, we work with the pineal gland as its own chakra. So you have the crown chakra come in to the center of your head where it nestles. And you have your third eye projecting out that also connects to the third, to the center of your brain. The center of your brain where the pineal gland is, is also where the crown chakra and the third eye meet. So your crown chakra and your third eye, when they are fully connected with an activated pineal gland, become, can become one. The other thing to remember is because our awareness is usually forward, you know, it's much easier to sneak up on someone behind them than walking to them. Like, okay, Judy. Don't notice me. I'm going to surprise you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but you can sneak up behind someone because our awareness is almost always forward. When we activate our chakras, they're not just forward. They're also behind us and to our sides and up and down and every which direction, right? Um, you'll notice when your heart chakra is fully activated, a lot of times you'll feel like you have, like your guardian angel has come into your body and you have angelic wings behind you. 
And yes, sometimes that is true. But sometimes it's also your heart chakra has opened behind you and you're like, oh my God, what's this energy behind me? Uh, and honestly, angels do not have wings. They're beings of pure energy. When we see them though, we see their open heart chakra and you know, it truly looks like wings. Just as when we see divine beings, we feel like they have a halo. It's a beautiful crown chakra. So if you activate your crown chakra and your third eye and connect both to the pineal so it becomes active, people will see you with a halo. And if you activate your heart chakra fully so it's open in all directions, people will see you with wings. And they will start treating you as though you're like a special angel. Which means, of course, people who love angels will love you. And people who hate angels will fear you a little bit. So then you need to work with them on like making sure love flows to them or let them be distant from you until you know how to deal with that kind of energy. Um, because not everyone loves angels, sadly. <laughs> so um, another part of my vision was something I've been working with for a while. But the heart chakras, you know, we don't just have the heart chakra flowing up and down. We have our physical heart. And as we're bringing energy flowing, we send it to our physical heart as well, not just up and down. And the physical heart mixes divine energy, uh, be it from earth or source or the cosmos or other dimensions, with our blood and oxygen and pumps it through our body. This is part of how humans were designed to be, and it's part of how we're designed to maintain our health. You know, when you learn of like gurus and yogis who live for hundreds of years, you know they're constantly mixing the highest level of divine energy in with their blood and oxygen. So every cell and molecule of their being is constantly being refreshed with divine energy. You hear that, Will? That's homework for you. We humans get it a little backwards. We're like, oh, I have a heartbreak. My heart is broken, and now I'm polluting my energy flow. Well, if you don't want a broken heart, say, you know what? You know, for me, I'm single. This guy I dated turned out to be a bit of a scoundrel, so I'm going to fill myself with divine love. Hey, angels, fill me up, fill me up, and send it through my body. This is one way we help prevent cancer. If you work with German new medicine, vibrational healing, every kind of you know, non-pharmaceutical healing, it calls for bringing in some kind of frequency and allowing that to flow into your body and fill you. Well, the heart is a major gatekeeper for converting healing energy into physical healing or non-physical healing energy into physical healing energy. Now on the other side of our heart, we have, I call it the cosmic heart. Some people call it the high heart, the divine heart, the community heart. Um, I can tell you when we photograph auras, um, all the energy that is on this side of the body is energy that's coming into the body. And our physical heart is here pulling energy in. All the energy on this side of the image is energy that goes out to the community. And if you have an active aura and you photograph it like a bunch of times in a row, you'll see the energy is actually swirling in. Like your crown chakra, you can see the energy coming in this way and going out that way. So um, the heart on this side that I call the cosmic heart it's the part that all the love that's coming in and flowing through goes out to others. It might go out to divine. It might go out to a room full of wonderful people. It might go out to the internet. But it's energy that connects with external. Um, when I do um, etheric surgery on people, which is where it's sort of a bit of channeling where I kind of move out of my body and allow healers to come into my body and do work. Um, 
I find a lot of times I find clutter in the cosmic heart. I'll find shards and daggers and broken pieces of stuff in the physical heart that we'll remove because of heartbreak. Um, and I'll find here little images of elements that I'm like, why do I see a toy rocking horse in here? And then a person will pour out a story. And I'm like, why do I see tap shoes? Why do I see this? Why do I see that? And everything, the clutter that I see, it, the person will tell me a story. And it's always about heartbreak from someone outside. The pain I see in the physical heart is almost always broken shards and shattered elements, and it's stuff we're clinging on the inside that may or may not have been related to another person, but it's the pain we're keeping here. So there, there are different kinds of pains, and we clear it out. We just clear it out. I'm like, you don't need this shard here. You don't need this stick there. You don't need this and that. And, you, know, you don't need this engagement ring here. Let's just get it all out. And then we can get the energy flowing. So the more we get the energy flowing, it is, it, the easier it is for them to release whatever debris is there. You know, like a polluted river that has no water flowing. Very hard to clear. But once you get the water flowing, it's easy to clear away the debris and the garbage. So um, don't feel like you need to be pure before you can do good. You can do good and you purify in the process. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as we bring in the divine love and it's flowing through, we divert some to our physical heart and send it into our body. And we bring it back from the physical heart to the chakra heart, send it to our cosmic heart connect it with all that's out there and bring some back here. We're going all the way in a figure eight, which is, you know, eternity, eternal love flowing through your entire chest, through your entire bosom. And meanwhile, we've got all that great Kundalini energy flowing up and out and flowing down and out, which is like multi-eternity flowing every which way. So this was the vision that was given to me about sending the energy up and around and filling your body with all of this divine energy. Um, it sounds a little complicated because it's a mindfulness meditation technique where you really you know, I'm, I'm going to load a bunch of short videos with the practice of this onto YouTube so you guys can practice. Because you have to then have the awareness of actively sending the energy. But just like uh, you have to practice the scales before you can play Chopin on the piano, right? So it's a technical practice that allows the beautiful art to come in and take over. Does that? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So that right there, and the fact that the three of us, Jean-Marie, Shamanist Azure Windwalker, myself, all had comparable visions in three different parts of the world within the exact-ish same time caused me to go forward and speak with even more people. And I'm amazed with how many people in 2019 have had comparable energy flow visions come to them. Just at the time when Gaia said to me, our timelines are about to expand and we're becoming more of a love-based, eh, who cares which timeline you're in so long as you're gaining experiences and having fun sort of reality. Think what happens as we're moving into this reality and we have full connection with self inward and flowing outward, it will only help with the healing of our planet. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. All right.